Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life the Mundane and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be jumping into some things that I wish I would have known about Apology of Science before we started. Things like, what do you actually need to buy? Do you need to buy the student workbook? Do you need to buy the other additional materials that go with it? Um, also things like, how do you divide up the chapters? How much do you read in one sitting and how do you schedule it out for the year? We're also going to discuss things like, how do you actually get the science experiments done? Or do you even do the science experiments? So we're going to discuss all all of that and more in this video, so let's get started. Okay, so I have to say first that I am loving Apology of Science. We are going on our third year of it now, and I actually used it as a student, as a, um, a second generation homeschooler, so I used it in high school as well. We are going to be talking about the Young Explorers um, section, and which is a series of books that covers from kindergarten to sixth grade, um, and each book can be covered kindergarten to sixth grade. If you want to find out more about which book should you start with and more of a peek through, flip through of the actual books, I recommend checking out the video I've already done above on how to get started and um, tips like that. But first of all, what do you need to buy? Each of these textbooks is enough for one year of science, or if you really want to do it at an accelerated pace, you could pick one book to do over a six month period, but we'll talk about that here in just a second. They also offer options like lap booking options. If you guys aren't familiar with lap booking, it's turning a file folder into this great educational hands-on activity thing. Super cool, super not for me because I'm not a hands-on person. If you like hands-on activities and you want extra crafty type of objects, things to do to reinforce lessons, that might be something to consider getting. Also, they offer an audiobook option, which typically I'm all about audiobooks. I love using audio textbooks in our curriculum. We use it for our story of the world, for our history, and for Grammar Galaxy, for our grammar stuff. We love the audio textbook options, but I found Apology of Science's audiobooks to be very dry. The point is, I didn't find them super engaging, and I'm sorry, Apology, I love your stuff. I really, really do, but I personally would just skip out on that option. It's an extra amount of money you don't need to spend. Um, another thing is they offer these student books, which everybody wonders, should I actually buy the student book to go with it? And the answer is no, unless it should be yes. <laughs> the truth is, is that the student book is a helpful resource if you are not one that likes to do things on your own. If you like to have it just ready to go, um, open and go, then that might be a good option for you. Um, it has coloring sheets, it has copy work. They give you the scientific speculation seat sheets um, to analyze and go over what you think will be happening in the science experiments. So they give you a lot of things like that, which are really great. That being said, it is an extra cost. It is an extra cost per kid, which if you have a big family like mine, adds up really fast. And instead, we prefer to use our own notebooks. So I'm gonna show you guys that right here. We just bought these notebooks from Walmart. They're about $3 per kid instead of about $20 or $30 like the student journals are. And they are nice, heavy duty, thick paper on the inside, which is super helpful because when they're doing nature journaling or when you're out doing science experiments and it's getting messy or you're outside, it's just nicer to have that harder, sturdier paper to write with that's not gonna get so easily wet or destroyed or whatever. Um, also, it has a nice little sleeve in the front that you can slide in either a kid's name thing, they can make their own cover, however you wanna do it. But they have that for the science notebook. And we just had our kids each time that we read, um, write or draw or both something in there that they had heard about in the lesson. So the cool thing was even our, you know, little, little ones are able to draw a picture of something. Okay. So we learned about plants this time. We learned about trees and how they are looking for sunlight. Sometimes they'll bend to look for sunlight. So they're going to draw a picture of a tree bending to look for sunlight. Okay. They might also label the parts of a plant or copy a diagram that they see in the book about the life cycle of, you know, of moss or whatever. They're going to copy that into their student journal. So what I like about this is it's more personalized to the kid. It's cheaper. And I feel like they know it better because they choose what they want to write about. Okay, so now you know what to buy, but how do you divide up the reading? There's only 14 lessons in most of these books. 14. Our school weeks, our school years run more weeks than that. Here's what we do. These chapters are really not meant to be consumed in a week. 
it's a lot of information to be covered in a week. So typically what I recommend is reading until you get to a what do you remember section. I use that as a review to go over it. We do it twice a week. Every other day is history. Every other day is science. And there's plenty of material to get you through two weeks of science. Now, that being said, again, maybe you have an older child or you're trying to get a lot of science in at a time. You could do this at an accelerated pace where you do a lesson a week. And if you do that way, you will have 13, you could do that 13 lesson section in the first semester and another one in the second semester. But that would be a lot of information to pour into your kids. So I would make sure that they were ready to receive that and to make sure that you're scheduling, you've thought through how much reading that's actually gonna be. Maybe you would do that if you were gonna do science every single day and forego doing extras like history or social studies or things like that. I do know some people who prefer to do science one semester and history another. So you could totally do it in that way. Um, if you wanted to, but read till that section, discuss it with your kids, and then move on for the next day to the next what do you remember section. And that's going to be about four times of reading, typically averaging about four times of reading to finish that in a two week period. This is also a great thing if you have little, little, littles and they can't handle that much information. It is broken up into teeny smaller sections. Um, a few of them are like a page and a half, but for the most part, they are smaller sections and you could just read one section at a time if you wanted to, but that's going to take you a lot longer to get through. So just keep that in mind when you're figuring out scheduling. Hopefully that schedule and that idea will help you plan as you go into planning for next year. Another thing that we have found hugely helpful that I wish I would have known from the beginning was finding some accountability with your science. I don't know about you guys, but unless you are like uber passionate about science, which I know there are tons of people who are, science can be something that's easy to have go by the wayside. And so finding an accountability partner was super, super helpful for us. You could join a co-op and do a co-op class with your science and that would be totally fine. But for me, I didn't want something quite so structured or such a large time commitment. So instead I partnered up with a friend who was going through the same curriculum as we were together this year. And it has made a world of difference guys, like a complete world of difference on how we handle science and how we approach science. So I'm gonna share with you what we do and hopefully it'll give you some ideas and help you out. Um, but the first thing that we do is um, we sat down and picked out which science book we were going to do and we got together in person and talked about how we wanted to structure our time together. This was really, really helpful to do just once each semester. We sat down and we looked at what about halfway through the book was and decided which um, looked at each lesson together and decided one experiment that we would pick from each lesson to tackle. Now this might be the actual experiment at the end or sometimes they have learning activities mixed in. Whatever it is, we look through all those activities and experiments and pick one for each chapter. If it was a really small one, we might add a second one, but for the most part, we just picked one for each chapter. We figured out what our meeting schedule wanted to be. We knew if we were gonna do a lesson every two weeks, we wanted to meet once every two weeks. So we meet um, on the first and third Friday of every month. And we get together typically in person. Right now we are doing it over a video chat service because of the coronavirus, of course. But we would meet in person and the kids would take the first part of the time to share something they learned. Remember those journals that I had them do? They're gonna pick a page, any page they want, that really stood out to them or facts that they really found interesting and they're gonna stand up and present that information. The cool thing about this process is that it's kind of a show and tell aspect as well as a oral narration aspect, as well as a little bit of public speaking practice. And so it was awesome to see the kids grow and develop over the year of going from stumbling and going, uh, I don't know, this is a picture of a plant and a thing, what was it called? What do you remember? Uh, what was it, mom? Just remind me going from that to at the end being able to flip it open and be like oh and this was this kind of moss and this is the life cycle of the moss and this is how it starts from this and this and this and they were able to just very clearly do that now not to say everybody was able to do it perfectly all the time but you saw their confidence build as they shared with their friends it doesn't need to be a super long speech or performance thing they didn't have to practice it ahead of time but just teaching them to be able to get up in front of a group um and to be able to share what they have learned is super helpful for us so we did that for the first part we then would move to doing the science experiment together sometimes the science experiments would be fairly in depth and take you know several like 30 minutes 40 minutes like when we decide dissected um flowers for our science experiment and we glued them into our notebooks and labeled the different parts of the flower that took a little bit of time 
Other times it was much, much, much shorter and maybe it would only be a 10 minute experiment or something that we put together there and then took home. Like when we grew our beans in our Ziploc bags, we stuck them in there, we prepped it all, we labeled all the bags and then we took it home and waited for it to grow. We alternated meeting at each other's houses and frankly, we just spent the time afterwards, just moms getting to connect and talk and the kids getting to play. And it was something they really, really looked forward to um, each and every month to be able to get to do that twice a month. And having that accountability of having, oh, I've got to finish this chapter before we have science co-op. That was hugely helpful and instrumental in us not only finishing our book this year, but finishing it early. We finished May 1st. Um, and we are now taking the rest of May just to have our kids focus on their nature journals, going outside, sitting outside, observing nature, God's creation, writing and drawing things that they see. Um, we got a smaller version of that larger notebook that I talked about earlier that you can get at Walmart and just have our kids go outside about 10 to 15 minutes, at least twice a week, if not every day, go out and draw something. And then we're still getting together online um, and having the kids show off what they found in their nature journals. We'll do that through the end of May and probably take the summer off. And then we'll start again in the fall with astronomy, which my kids are very excited for. A few bonus tips for you guys is to make sure that you understand the layout. Take a little time to read those introductory pages at the beginning of your science notebook so you can understand truly some of the benefits and extras that Apologia offers you because you really don't have to have all the fe fancy extras and add-ons if you see what's already in the book. So for instance, they have those what do you remember sections, remember? And sometimes they will reference things that they covered in lesson one or two at the beginning of the school year at the very end of the book. Now I love this because it ties everything back together, but sometimes my mind and the kids' minds don't remember all of the specific terms. So no worries, anytime you see a what do you remember section, there's actually also an answer key in the back. So you will see there is, you know, lesson five, they'll give you the question that they asked and they'll give you an answer for it. So I did like the fact that there was an answer key in the back. They also give you a scientific speculation sheet that you can photocopy over and over again and use for your kids when they are doing the science experiments. We did not do that this year, but I think next year we'll incorporate a little bit more of that into our science co-op since our kids are becoming stronger writers and readers. Um, but we chose to forego that this year as we were figuring things out. They also offer a course website um, resource center, which is super helpful. And I can't show you all of it because there's passwords in here for only those who have purchased the book. So I don't want to share any copyrighted information but I do love the resources that they offer on this course website. There's additional videos or additional pictures if you wanna see up close to what something looks like. And um, they even sometimes have other activities or coloring sheets involved in that list as well. They we also found YouTube to be a huge resource to us guys. Please do not forget to use YouTube. You can look up videos of the science experiments that you don't get around to. Most of these science experiments have been done by somebody at some point. They may not be exactly the same, but the same idea or concept is being taught. So maybe you don't want to get into science experiments this year. Maybe your life is really hectic. You're in the middle of a move or transition or in the middle of a global pandemic. Whatever it is, if you're not feeling doing the hands-on experiments, even though I would recommend trying to incorporate some of that at least, don't be afraid to look up YouTube videos on the science experiments that they asked for. We also spent a little bit of time as we've discovered by doing video chat groups. Um, we can't do the experiments online as easily. Um, so we looked up videos on the different topics that we were talking about. So if we were talking about the life cycle of moths, I go look up a YouTube video and found so many neat ones. I would recommend when you're looking up the resources, look up whatever you're searching for, like life cycle of moss, and then just type in kids afterwards. And it'll give you more videos that are more kid directed. I do also recommend previewing the information. Not so much, I mean, maybe in some circumstances it's for content to make sure it's appropriate, but more so to make sure that it's an engaging, fun video because there are a lot of videos out there that are not that engaging and fun. But there are also a ton that really, really, truly are. Those YouTube videos can be a great resource, whether you're using them in a co-op setting or just using them at home. So I hope these tips have been helpful. I would love to know if you have any other tips for Apology of Science and how you guys are liking it or not liking it. Be sure to share those down below and be sure to stick around for Saturday's video because I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to declutter um, and how to do that in a way that's not overwhelming or frustrating. So so I'll look forward to seeing you guys then. Be sure to subscribe if you want to check out that video and we'll talk to you later. Bye.